Welcome back. All right, so we're going to review the other seven games. If you're looking for a review of the early games today, it's already on the channel, so go check that out. All right, we're going to start things off talking about St. Louis and San Jose. So the Blues are, I guess, mathematically still alive, kind of, sort of. Anyways, uh, so it's Hofer versus Cooley. Uh, Graf was playing for San Jose. That's why he signed with San Jose. They're like, can you play tomorrow? Uh, early press by the Blues. The shots are 3-1 to one in their favor, three minutes in. Uh, Blues press at six minutes. The Sharks then get some pressure of their own eight and a half minutes in. There's a net feed to Cairo, near miss there. We get a power play for the Blues. That's killed off by the Sharks. Uh, the shots were 13 to three for St. Louis with five minutes left. There's a net feed to Sod that gets picked off with 2.40 left. Blues get a power play, that's killed off. No shots on net. Uh, 20.1 seconds left. The Blues get their third power play. Uh, 24 minutes of penalties to Addison. I don't know what he said, but it wasn't very pleasant. So he gets two minutes for the penalty, two minutes for unsportsmanlike, uh, 10 minute misconduct and a game misconduct. So by my count, that's 24 minutes in penalties. Uh, but yeah, that power play rolls over into the third or into the second period. It's a four minute power play for uh, St. Louis. So the Blues struggle to, to set up. It's still scoreless, of course. Uh, Bolduc has a shot that's held. The Sharks finish the kill. There were four shots during the double minor, but St. Louis doesn't score on those power plays. Shots are 5 nothing Blues at five and a half minutes. We get a power play for the Sharks. Uh, Bordelow's robbed. Hofer holds on there. That's killed off. The Sharks press with nine minutes left. The shots on net are nine to six Blues with seven and a half minutes left. So you can see how things are evening up. Uh, we had a fight between Neighbors and Cunning. Uh, neighbors comes out of that with the instigator, and that power play is one that the Sharks score on. It's Eklund from Thrun and Granland at 1442. The Sharks then go back to the power play, and at 1650, Eklund scores again, this time from Zetterland and Bordelow. The Blues do look to respond, but after two periods, it's 2 0 for San Jose. Third period, Pareko versus Costin takes place. Then we have an early press for the Sharks. Uh, power play for the Blues, and they score on it. It is Kairou from Butchnevich and Thomas at 321. Uh, he puts that one top shelf past a screen. Shots are 4-1 to one for the Blues at 5 minutes. We get a power play for the Sharks. There's a shorthand chance for Nathan Walker. That's saved. Power play's killed off. 625 left. The Sharks get another power play. That's killed off as well. Uh, the Blues press with 3.5 minutes left. They would pull the goalie with 237 left, and it takes 7 seconds after that for Braden Shen to tie the game. Thomas and Perunovic with the assist. A nice one-timer to tie it. We're going overtime. We have a power play for St. Louis. Cairo has a shot that's held. The Blues call a timeout during that power play. Uh, Shen fires one high. That power play is killed off. And then on a rush, San Jose wins this. It's Eklund from Cunning at 356. So it's an overtime win for San Jose. They go to 18-50-8 and eight on the season. They have an outside chance of getting to 20 wins. Uh, for St. Louis, 40-32-5 and five with the loss. Shots on net, 13-5 St. Louis in the first, 14-9 San Jose in the second, 11-5 St. Louis in the third, and they outshot them 3-1 in the overtime, but San Jose shot's the one that matters. Final shots, 36-25 St. Louis, power plays, the Blues 1 for 6, San Jose 2 for 5, the hits 12-10 for St. Louis, uh, Hofer saved 22 out of 25, and hey, way to go Cooley, I believe this is his first win, 34 saves on 36 shots, that'll help the save percentage too. I know it was rough coming into today. So, uh, Philadelphia and Columbus. I wasn't wrong. I want to be wrong. I want to be wrong. I want to see Philadelphia fight for this playoff spot, but it's just not there. So, it's Arison versus Greaves. We get a power play for Philadelphia. Does it suck? It's a four-minute power play. Hazard your guesses now. Yeah, no, of course that's killed off. Uh, they, their power play was at 12.8% coming into this one. And drops a little further. Uh, Goudreau's then denied. The Flyers rush. The shots are six apiece at seven minutes. There's a near miss for Texier as Columbus presses. Sanheim has a net feed that gets picked off. Columbus presses with eight and a half minutes left. And Goodbranson goes five hole pass to screen. Uh, Putia and Danforth with the assists at 12.08. It's one nothing Columbus. Atkinson's then denied on a breakaway. Uh, Konechny with a near miss on a three on one rush. And then Severson buries one from the left circle. Wierenski and Goudreau with the assists at 18.54. It's 2-0 Columbus after one. Second period. Flyers press at one and a half minutes. We get a power play for Columbus. That's killed off. The shots are 4-2 for Columbus. Six and a half minutes in. Tippett fires one high on a rush. Uh, Columbus presses at eight minutes and eventually they score. It's Severson on a nice cross-ice pass. Uh, he scores it at 8.23 from Goudreau and Nylander. 
Columbus Press is at the half. The Flyers Press with seven and a half minutes left, and eventually they score. Uh, Lixell gets his first NHL goal from Hathaway at 14:31. Buries that one on a rush after Hathaway gets the turnover, but Columbus answers. Uh, Blankenberg goes top shelf from a distance. Yerichek and Texier with the assists at 15:20. The Flyers do press to close it out, but it's it's four to one for Columbus after two. Third period. Columbus presses at a minute and a half. The shots are four to one. Flyers at three minutes. Uh, Columbus presses at four and a half minutes. Uh, Hathaway has a screenshot that's saved. Lawton fires one wide as the Flyers get some pressure. We get a power play for Columbus. That's killed off. They go back to the power play and it takes three seconds. Wierenski with his second goal of the game, or his first goal of the game, first of two. Uh, Voronkov with the assist at 9.27. So yeah, that took three seconds. Nice. Uh, Columbus presses with nine minutes left and at 11.26, Wierenski buries a rebound. Now it's the second goal of the game. Meyer and Malatesta with the assists. I believe that's Malatesta's first NHL point. And then at 15.07, Jennings scores for uh, the Philadelphia Flyers from Cates. It's his first NHL goal. It was through a screen. I mean, it's a nice moment for him, just like Lexell getting his first NHL goal is a nice moment for him. But you lose 6-2. to two. Those are your nice moments. Uh, Columbus goes to 26-39-12 and 12 with the win. Philadelphia 36-31-11 and 11 with the loss. They are officially outside of the top eight in the east i don't anticipate them getting back in shots on net 14 to 10 columbus in the first 15 13 philly in the second 14 to 6 philly in the third final shots 39 to 33 for the flyers power plays philadelphia 0 for 2 columbus 1 for 3 the hits 10 to 8 for columbus arison saved 27 out of 33 greaves saved 37 out of 39 all right next up uh, Toronto and Montreal. So, Samsona versus Montembeau. Nice has a rush chance that's saved. Caulfield couldn't bury one in close. But the Habs started out very well. They were out shooting Toronto 3-1 to one, four minutes in. Good forechecking by the Habs. The Leafs get zone time. They weren't getting shots at that point. Riley has a shot that's held. There's some pushing there. Suzuki's then denied from the slot. Nylander to McMahon gets picked off. And Marner has a net drive that's blocked. The Habs press in the final minute. But it's 0-0 after one. Second period. Early press by the Habs. The Leafs then press at two minutes, and they score. Domi uh, tips one five-hole from the slot. Labushkin and Riley with the assists at 221. And then Matthews banks one in off Savard's skate at 237. Uh, that is goal number 64 this season for Matthews. So he still has a shot at 70. Either way, 64 goals is a lot. Uh, Leafs press at four and a half minutes. The shots are five to three for Toronto at seven minutes, and at 720, uh, Nyes buries a rebound in close. Nylander and Brody with the assists. We then had a fight between Reeves and Pizzetta. Uh, McMahon then scores at 7.54 from Marner. So a lot happens in a 34-second period of game time there. And that ends the night for Montembeau. Primo is in the net. We then get a power play for the Habs, and they score on it. Uh, Suzuki buries one on a cross-crease pass. Slavkovsky and Matheson with the assists at 9.06. We then get two minutes of four on four. Matthews has a net feed that's picked off. The Habs press with six and a half minutes left. Giordano has a shot that's caught and held. The Habs would press and they would score. Caulfield, who started getting some goals lately, he scores from Matheson and Suzuki at 18.32. It's a wrister from in close. It's four to two Toronto after two. Third period. Kovacevic has a shot that's caught and held. The Habs press six minutes in. There wasn't a lot for me to talk about because the shots are only one apiece at six and a half minutes. Uh, things get pushy on a hold by Samsonov. We get a power play for Toronto. That's killed off. The Habs press with eight minutes left. The fans call one. The referee does not. Uh, the Leafs press with three minutes left. The Habs press. They pull the goalie. They can't get closer. Your final score is four to two for Toronto. They go to 44, 23, and nine. They had a pretty good week. Montreal 29, 35, and 12 with the loss. Shots on net, 9 to 4 Montreal in the first, 18 to 8 Toronto in the second, 9 to 8 Montreal in the third. Final shots 30 to 26 for the Leafs. Power plays, Toronto didn't score on the one they had. Montreal scored on the one they had. It's only two power plays in the game. The hits 35 to 23 for Montreal. Samsonov saves 24 to 26. I think he's the starter come game one. Uh, Montembeau saved 8 out of 12, and then Primo saved all 18 in relief. All right, next game up is New Jersey and Ottawa. This was an interesting game. Became far more interesting than I think New Jersey wanted it to be. Uh, and I continue my run. of I, I try to wear jerseys of teams that aren't going to finish in the playoffs. And I still, I don't think New Jersey gets there, but I know they're not mathematically out of it. Uh, it's Allen versus Forsberg. There's an early press by Ottawa. Chikrin has a, uh, a chance to kick the side. 
Uh, Mercer uh, is denied in close, and then at 350, Howla buries one on a rush. It was only the second shot on net for New Jersey. Uh, Jack Hughes and Brendan Smith with the assists. We then had a fight between McDermott and Imama. Is Imama's first NHL game? Uh, so the shots are three to one for the Devils at eight minutes. Meyer has a wrist shot that's held. There's a net feed to Howla that gets picked off. And then Palat. It's a point shot that Palat deflects in. Luke Hughes and Holtz with the assists of 1236. We get a power play for the Devils. That's killed off, but they would score again at 1633 at Smith from Bratt. And that ends the night for Forsberg. Corpusalo is in the net. Uh, Giroux is denied on a rush. Things get punchy at the horn. So that means the Sens power play to start the second period. And they would score on it. Sanderson posting in from the point. Batherson and Giroux with the assists at 37 seconds. So now it's just a two-goal lead. And with New Jersey, you never know. Uh, Kubalik beats out an icing. Joseph has a rush chance that saved. The shots are 3-1 to one Ottawa. Five and a half minutes in. Brad has a fast break. That's defended. We get a power play for the Devils. Meyer has a shot that's caught and held. At 11.04, New Jersey restores the three-goal lead. He's sure from Brat and Smith. Uh, so that makes it 3-1, to one, or 4-1, to one, I should say. Meyer then has a slot shot that deflects out. It stays 4-1 to one for New Jersey after two. Third period, teams exchange rushes. We then get a power play for the Sens, and they score on this one as well. Uh, at 3.37, it's Giroux from Sanderson and Batherson. He wires that one from the left circle to get the game a little closer. Uh, then we have a penalty shot for Jack Hughes, and he, he just whiffed on it. He just, he lost the puck. So, yeah, that, that happened. Uh, the shots are 3-2 to two Devils at 6 minutes. The Sens press at 8 minutes. Eventually, they would score. At 14-17 on a fast break, Brady Kachuk scores to make the game that one goal closer. Uh, 4.03 left, the Sens get a power play. That's killed off with 26.8 seconds left and the goalie already on the bench. The Sens call a timeout. Uh, the Sens were a post away. They were a post away from the tie. I think it was Kachuk hit the post. Uh, but things are kind of fighty at the horn. So sometimes Department of Player Safety doesn't like things that happen after the closing bell. We'll see. Uh, four to three win for New Jersey. They go to 37, 36, and four to keep their faint playoff hopes alive. Uh, for Ottawa, 33, 39, and four. They're of course not in there. Uh, power plays or no shots, 10 to eight New Jersey in the first, 10 five New Jersey in the second, 15 to eight Ottawa in the third. Final shots are 28 apiece. Uh, power plays New Jersey 0 for two, Ottawa two for three. The hits were 36 to 19 for Ottawa. Allen saves 25 out of 28. Forsberg saved 6 out of 9, and then Corpus Allo saved 18 out of 19 in relief. Now it's time to change boards. All right, so Nashville and the Islanders. So Nashville's hit kind of a skid. Um, I'm not, I, I don't think there's any reason to be overly concerned if you're a Nashville fan, but maybe mildly, maybe. Um, it, it might be time for me to do a, a, a panic index, maybe tomorrow, uh, as we get closer to said playoffs and where teams are right now. There's one in particular that I think might be closer to panic right now than they were. So, it's Lankinen versus Varlamov. There's an early press by the Islanders. McLean to Clutterbuck. There's a near miss there. The shots are two apiece, four and a half minutes in. The Islanders press at five minutes. Evangelista misses one wide on a net drive. Clutterbuck has a rush chance that saved. The shots are seven to four for the Islanders with nine minutes left. Uh, Nashville presses with eight minutes left. There's pressure by the Islanders in the final minute, but kind of a quiet first period. Uh, and it's 0-0 zero, zero after 1. Second period, Forsberg fires one wide. Uh, the Preds get some pressure. They press again at 3.5 minutes. Lauzon has a screenshot. that saved. Shots are 3 apiece, 5.5 minutes in. And they were 15-13 for the Islanders altogether at that point. I thought it was a very evenly played game. Uh, the fans call one. The referee doesn't. And then at 9.07, uh, Dobson wires one past the screen for his 10th goal of the season. Riley and Barzell with the assists. It's one nothing for the Islanders. We have a power play for New York. That's killed off. Then Nashville gets a power play soon after. That's killed off as well. There's a press by Nashville after it ends. The Islanders get some pressure with two minutes left. Nashville presses to close it out. But we're going to the third period with the Islanders up 1-0. And this was a very Islanders game. This game went fast. This game almost caught the 4 o'clock starts in terms of when it finished. So third period, Palmieri is a rush chance that saved. The shots are 3-2 Nashville at 2.5 minutes. Sezikis has a net drive that saved. Power play for Nashville, that's killed off. Uh, Nashville had more power plays. In fact, they go right back to the power play, and that's killed off as well. Now, they're getting shots. The shots are 13-4 to four for Nashville with eight and a half minutes left. Uh, Nashville presses with seven minutes left. We get a pre uh, post for Forsberg. Uh, Carrier fires one high. The Preds have some momentum. They just couldn't hit the net. 
Uh, Barzell tries to bank one in. Horvat's then denied on a rush. The goalie pull happens with 2.15 left. The Islanders ice the puck with 1.36 left. And then at 18.41, Palmieri scores from Romanov to make it 2-0. Nashville pulls the goalie again. Yossi has a good chance that's held. Your final score is 2-0. The Islanders go to 35-27-15. and 15. They've won four in a row. This is why we people like, nobody wants that spot in the East. Okay, um, and then <laughs> Nashville 44-29-4 and four with the loss. Shots on net, 12-9 Islanders in the first, 12-8 Nashville in the second, 18-10 Nashville in the third. Final shots, 39-30 in favor of the Nashville Predators. Power plays, Nashville 0 for 3, Islanders 0 for 1. The hits, 29-19 for the Islanders. Lankinen was very good, 28 saves on 29 shots. Varlamov saved all 39 shots for the shutout. I think he's going to be the starter come playoff time. I do. If they make the playoffs, I don't see how Varlamov's not the starter. Not as an insult to Sorokin, just Varlamov's been the better of the two goaltenders. All right, next up, the Oilers and the Flames. This isn't as, ex as exciting when the Flames are a playoff team. Like, if these teams were both above the playoff line or if the Flames were still mathematically alive, I think we would have had more fireworks in this. I know there were a lot of power plays, but... I didn't feel like it was as hotly contested as they often can be in the Battle of Alberta. So it's Pickard versus Markstrom. I was surprised they weren't wearing the Heritage jerseys either. Uh, Sharon Govich fires one high on a rush. Good forechecking by Calgary. Things then get punchy on a hole by Markstrom. Flames press at four and a half minutes. Coleman has a rush chance that's held. The shots are three apiece, six minutes in. Flames press at eight minutes. Calgary draws a power play. That's killed off. The Oilers press with eight and a half minutes left. The Flames go back to the power play. That's killed off. And then the Flames get a third power play, which leads to a minute and 19 seconds of four on four. Everything's killed off. And then with 105 left, the Oilers get a power play. Despite all the power plays, it didn't feel like it was one of those games. Uh, at 1945, Dreisaitl opens the scoring on the power play from Nugent Hopkins and McDavid. He fires that one home from the right circle. Uh, so it's one nothing Oilers after one. Second period, the shots are four to two for Calgary at two and a half minutes, but at three, three twelve. Uh, Connor Brown wires a rebound in close. Yan Mark and Ryan with the assists. I'm so happy to see Connor Brown getting goals now. It's great. Uh, power play for Calgary. And at 357, uh, after that power play is done, Sharon Govich wires one from the left circle. Uh, Kuzmenko and Huberto with the assists. No, that had to be a power play goal. That was a power play goal. I'm looking down here. And I'm going, okay, the two for six, and I see two power play goals here. I'm like, that had to be after. I didn't label that one as a power play goal. That's power play goal for Sharon Govich. There you go. So wired from the left circle. Flames then press to tie it. The shots are nine to four for Calgary at six minutes. The Oilers draw a power play, and Bouchard just rips one that hit Hyman on the inside of the foot. Um, and, and I just thought to myself, like, Zach Hyman has to get up thinking, what did I do to you? So Hyman would go walk it off. Uh, the Flames do kill off that power play. Then we have a post for Gilbert right before Hyman comes back. Uh, McDavid to Hyman near miss on a rush. Uh, Pospisil nearly ties it. Just put it through the crease rather than into the net. Uh, Flames press after that. The Oilers get pinned down with 3.30 left. In fact, before Darnell Nurse left the ice, he had a shift of 3 minutes and 52 seconds. But the Oilers do clear it out and survive it. Things get punchy and a hold by Pickard. The Oilers come out with the power play with about 13 seconds left. So that rolls over into the third period where the Flames finish the kill and only allow one shot. So the Oilers are ahead 2-1, to one, but they're not pulling away in this one. Not even close. Shots are 3-2 to two Calgary at four minutes. Brown has a net feed. That's blocked. There's a glove save on Kane. Puck's cleared out. Then we get a power play for Calgary, and Kadri would score on it. He gets the power play marker from Sharon Govich and Kuzmenko at 7-13. The Flames then look for the lead now that they've tied it. Uh, there's a cane wraparound that saved. We then get a power play for the Oilers, and they score on it as Bouchard. So this time the shot did not hit Hyman. It goes into the net. Nugent Hopkins and McDavid with the assists at 10:35. Connor McDavid now has 99 assists this season. That's pretty good. It's, it's pretty good. Uh, the Oilers go back to the power play. That becomes a minute and 11 seconds of four on four. Everything gets killed off. The Flames pull the goalie with 137 left. And in 19:17, Nugent Hopkins hits the empty net. And your final score in this one's 4-2. to two. The Oilers go to 47-24-5 and five on the season. Calgary 34-37-5 and five with the loss. The shots on net, 9 apiece in the first. 18-8 to eight, Calgary in the second. 10-9 to nine, Edmonton in the third. Final shots 36-27 to 27 for the Flames. Power plays, both teams go 2-6. for six. So, wow. 
Um, 12 power plays. But again, I, I didn't feel like this was as, as fighty as some of the other games we've seen this week. Uh, hits 17 to 12 Calgary. That's what I'm talking about. It just it wasn't really that physical a game. It just had a lot of power plays. Pickard, 34 saves on 36 shots. Markstrom, 23 saves on 26 shots. Markstrom continues to have his struggles against the Edmonton Oilers. All right, next up, last game of the night, uh, Vancouver and L.A. And I used the, the Millionaire's Magnet because I thought, you know, the odds of Vancouver beating L.A. with the way they've been lately, not great. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, DeSmith versus Talbot in this one. There's an early press by the Canucks. Uh, Gavrikov couldn't bury one on a rush. We get a power play for the Kings, and they score on it. What was their second shot? Uh, Kempe from Kopitar and Doughty at 248. The Kings press for an answer. There's more pressure by them at four minutes. They go back to the power play, and I write right here, is it done? And pretty quickly, they score on it. At 545, it's Doughty from Arvidsson and Kempe. And I put, yep, as in this is done. It's a 2-0 lead. Uh, it's top shelf from the slot, and I thought that I can't see the Canucks coming back and winning this one. So the Canucks press, Kings block the net, and then at 10.48, Puck takes a bit of a Canucks bounce, and Besser gets the goal. It's his 39th from Pedersen and Cole. So there's the chance on Wednesday when I go see the Canucks against Arizona, I might see Besser score his 40th. Maybe I'll wear a Besser jersey again. Uh, Pedersen's tonight on a fast break. The Canucks press with two and a half minutes left, but it's 2-1 to one LA after one. Second period. 2.09 in, Laferriere scores from Spence and Fiala, and then the Kings look for another. Uh, they were a crossbar away from 4-1 to as well. Uh, the shots are 6-3 to for Vancouver at 5.5 minutes. The Canucks press at 6 minutes, but eventually on a fast break, Fiala scores. Uh, he gets that one from Kopitar and Anderson at 8.49. Uh, Hughes then has the shot that saved as the Canucks press. The shots were 13-10, to Vancouver with 7 minutes left. So unlike previous games... The Canucks had lots of opportunities, just couldn't solve Talbot. Talbot was fantastic. Uh, Gavrikov has a rush that's defended. Myers has a shot that's saved as the Canucks press. Uh, 148 left. The Canucks get a power play, so that rolls into the third period. The Canucks are down four to one. They gotta, they gotta score on this. They don't. Uh, so 12 seconds left for the Canu for the Kings to finish the kill. They do that. Uh, Canucks go back to the power play. Not only was that killed off, the Canucks didn't get a shot on net during that. Shots are one apiece, four minutes in. Uh, Talbot, uh, I, I figures, got Vancouver's number. They showed all the stats, too. Yeah, he's had their number this year. But Joshua scores at 723 from Miller and Hronick. And then at 1035 on a turnover, uh, good forechecking by the Kings makes this happen. Trevor Moore from Dano. We then get a power play for the Kings, and it's a shorthanded goal. And finally, Teddy Bluger gets a goal. So if you're looking for a positive as a Canuck fan... A, they played well in the third period, and B, Teddy Bluger gets off the schneid. Uh, Zadorov with the assist at 12.35. But then it becomes a minute and 43 seconds of five on three. However, uh, the Canucks kill all that off. So, again, there's some positives there, right? We get a power play for Vancouver, and this is where the positives change because Adrian Kempe scores a shorthanded goal at 17.16. The Kings finish the kill. Your final score is 6-3 for L.A. Vancouver drops to 47-22-8. and eight. Uh, They don't seem all that all that interested on winning the division, so Edmonton can have it. Uh, for L.A., they're 41-25-11. and 11. They jump past uh, Vegas. And not only that, I did the preview for tomorrow's games in between the second and third period, and I had already penciled in that the L.A. Kings won that game and moved up. I knew down by three, the Canucks not coming back in L.A. Uh, but the shots in this one, 8-5 to five, Vancouver in the first, 20-12 to 12, Vancouver in the second, 14-12 to 12, Vancouver in the third. Final shots are 42-29 to 29 for the Canucks. Power plays 0-3 for, for Vancouver. LA 2-4. for four. Uh, Hits 26-18 for Vancouver. DeSmith 23 saves on 29 shots. Talbot 39 saves on 42 shots. Interestingly enough, too, they, they uh, went to natural stat trick uh, and they talked about how the Canucks are 27th in scoring since the All-Star break for goals per game. But they're second in high danger chances. So they're just not burying them when they have the chance. Um, maybe that'll change. It's going to have to when they go into the playoffs. Or yeah, they'll be out in the first round. But like I've said, I'm just enjoying the ride while it lasts with Vancouver. Because I've learned that over the last 40 plus years. Alright, thank you guys so much for watching as always. Don't forget to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always as well. And if you haven't already hit like and subscribe, it's greatly appreciated. I will talk to you again soon.